This is our first mini lecture in flight dynamics. In this very first lecture, we will know the notations for aircraft motions and define the commonly used axis systems for flight dynamic analysis. Now let's look at the aircraft rotational motion. From here, we can see an aircraft. The red dot, which are the origin of the three axes, is the center of gravity. And we can see three axes, x, y, and z. X is uh, uh, longitudinal, follows the longitudinal direction of the aircraft. Y, the positive Y points to the right wing tip. Z is pointing downwards. Okay, if the aircraft rotates about the Y axis, we call it pitch motion, and this concerns the longitudinal stability. If the aircraft rotates about X axis, it's uh, called the roll motion. If it rotates about the z-axis, we call it yaw motion. And both motion concerns the lateral directional stability. Since now we can see there are two types of stability, and fortunately, these two stabilities can be studied separately. Okay, now we know the motions, and let's see how do we represent it, and means what's the notation we use to uh, represent them. Okay, about the row which is around the x-axis, the rolling moment is L, the rolling angle is phi, the rolling rate is P, which is uh, angular velocity. For yaw, uh, yawing moment is N, yawing angle is uh, per se, yawing rate is R. For pitch, pitching moment is M, pitching angle is theta, pitching rate is Q. Just now we define positive x, y, and z, and also the positive direction of rho, yaw, and pitch. All those things follow the right-hand system. Okay, so for now, we should determine the positive deflection of the control surfaces. For aileron, it's responsible for rho. So the right aileron down, left aileron up, are the positive deflections. For elevator, we know elevator is uh, um, responsible for pitch. If the elevator moves deflects downward, that's a positive deflection of the elevator. For rotor, it's responsible for yaw. And if the rotor deflects towards the left, that's a positive deflection of, of the rotor. For each device deflection and we measure it by angle so delta a is for aileron deflection angle delta e is for elevator deflection angle delta r is for rotor deflection angle i don't know whether you notice the positive deflection of any device always gives the negative moment for example, if we have positive deflection of the aileron, it will give a rolling moment, which is negative. Is that right? So use your right hand. If the right aileron down, there will be more lift generated on the right wing. So the moment will pointing towards the tail. So that's the negative deflection. Just now, we know positive deflections always gives rise to negative moments. That's a very important point we should remember now. And now we need to know what does a pilot do to generate positive deflections. Well, it's not so hard for now because the, the positive deflection always gives rise to negative moment. For example, for negative row, which means the aircraft will roll to the left. So in this case, the, if you are the pilot, what you will do is your, you, you should move your control stick towards the left. Okay, about the pitch. And we know the positive deflection of the elevator will generate a negative pitch, which means the pitch downward. So 
if you are pilot, you should move your stick forward. Similarly, um, if you are generating negative yaw, which is a uh, uh, positive deflection of the rotor. For negative yaw, what you do is uh, you are yawing to the left, you need to press your left pedal. The next mission in this class is to define the three commonly used uh, axis systems for flight dynamic analysis. The first one is the uh, aircraft axis. And apparently we can see the aircraft in here. Again, the red dot overlaps with the center of gravity. That's the origin of this aircraft axis. Okay, now you can see X. X is apparently follows the longitudinal line of the aircraft in a symmetrical plane. And the longitudinal line actually is a connection between the nose point and the tail point. That in here is uh, the X axis. And now we can see that Z axis is perpendicular to X again in the symmetrical plane. And if we use a right hand system, okay, take out your right hand, and then you can see the Y axis again points towards the right wing tip. Now, we, if we overlap another line, which is the dash, red dash line, we call it a horizon line, and then we can find an angle, which is theta. So the, the theta is defined as a pitch angle, so it's defined as an angle between the longitudinal axis of the aircraft and the horizon. Okay, now we have a question. If the aircraft is on approach to land, which of the following is correct? You can take a few minutes to uh, consider. So in order to answer the previous question, we need to use a figure to help us to understand. Shown here is a passenger aircraft Boeing 747, which is much larger than the smaller aircraft we've seen just now. Okay, so we can see several informations from here. And we have theta, which is an angle formed between the longitudinal axis of the aircraft and the horizon. And also we can see this alpha. Alpha is an angle of attack, and it's an angle formed by the longitudinal axis of the aircraft with respect to the uh, velocity vector, so with the direction uh, where the aircraft is traveling to. Okay, so for now, we need to assume the aircraft longitudinal axis is parallel with the uh, aerofoil cord, which means uh, that's the overlap between the two lines. Okay, so now we, let's consider several scenario, several scenarios. Although we are just asked the relation between theta and alpha when the aircraft is approached to land. First, let's see climb. So it's similar as here. So now we. Uh, make the problem simpler and we just show the wing in here since uh, we assume the aircraft longitudinal axis is parallel overlap with the uh, aerofoil cord so this is a cord of the of the wing and we can see the alpha angle and this is a velocity vector so the alpha angle for example is 6 degrees and in this case because it's climbing it's taking off theta is about 30 degrees in this case when the aircraft is taking off, uh, the pitch angle is larger than the angle of attack. Okay. So the second scenario is uh, in leveled flight, which is uh, cruise. And in this case, a vector V infinity is uh, horizontal, overlaps with a horizon line. And in this case, theta equals alpha. Okay, now is a question we were asked during descent approach to land. And the aerofoil now is pointing downward, the leading edge. And we can see theta is, uh, in this case, minus 30 degree. And again, it's formed between the horizon and the longitudinal axis. And in, in here, because it's, although it's descending, we still need to generate a decent amount of lift. So the angle of attack maintains to be positive in this case. Alpha is positive and theta is negative, so theta is smaller than alpha. The second commonly used axis is the ground axis, and this is much uh, uh, 
easier to understand. So again, we have this aircraft. We know it's CG, and also it has a mass of W or its gravity. And also again, we have the uh, horizon line. Okay. So in the, for the ground axis, we have X always follows the horizon line, and that is perpendicular to X, and Y follows the um, right hand system. It's pointing into the into the screen. Okay, so in definition, in ground axis, the axes are fixed relative to the ground. X will always be parallel to the horizon, while Z will always be parallel to the weight vector. So pointing downwards, the origin of the ground axis can be arbitrary, not necessary at the center of gravity, which is different from the um, aircraft axis. Now is the last axis, which is the wind axis. And again, this aircraft, now the origin is at the center of gravity. Let's see, where is X, where is Z, okay? So assume the aircraft flow, uh, flies at a speed of V infinity and uh, follows that vector. And in a wind axis, X is defined by the direction in which the CG is traveling. So it follows the uh, velocity vector. Z is simply perpendicular to X. And I, we can see from here, Z is perpendicular to X. And I put a note in here. So X axis has no obvious relation to the horizon or vertical. So we need to remember that. That's an important point. And I put the theta angle in here. So theta is a pitch angle. And the pitch angle is defined as an angle between the longitudinal axis of the aircraft and the horizon. So again, it has no um, direct relation with respect to the x-axis. OK, so remember this also. And I, in here, we can find an angle which is bigger theta. And that's an angle formed by x-axis and a horizon. And pay attention to this uh, angle C, big theta. And now I have a question. In street level flight, um, theta, big theta equals to, to how much in degrees? I give you a few minutes. OK, now let's see the answer. First of all, theta should be zero because, you know why? Because x in level flight, x-axis follows the horizontal line. So x is parallel with horizon. In this case, does that mean theta is zero? OK, we now finish uh, this first mini lecture. and. Through this lecture, we need to know these key points. First of all, we need to remember the notations for moment, angle, and angular rate. The second is we need to remember the definition of positive deflection of the control surfaces and what's the pilot's action. Okay, so the last thing we went through is the axis system. We have three axis systems for the flight dynamics analysis. The first is the aircraft axis. We also have ground axis and a wind axis. And since ground axis is, uh, is, is not so hard, but when you compare the aircraft axis and a wind axis, we should pay extra uh, attention. And also we define the pitch, pitch angle theta, and also we compared in different scenarios the relation between theta and alpha.